Praise the Lord, everyone who is watching me. This is Pastor Victor. This is a day that God has made. I believe that I have a word from the Lord for you. And your life is going to change. You're going to be touched by the word of God that he has put on my heart. But before I go in the word of God, let me have a prayer with you. Let us believe God together so that he can use me to be a blessing in your life. Because today, it is a day of your miracle. You're not watching me by accident, but God has ordained, God has appointed a day like this, a time like this, to connect you with me so that you can tap into your blessing. You're going to receive a blessing through the word of God that I'm going to share with you. Something unique, something great is going to manifest in your life. You are the right person. You are a candidate of a miracle. I'm so excited that after this message, something good is going to happen to you. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm praying for my brothers. I'm praying for my sisters. Every person who's listening to me right now, any person under the sound of my voice, use me, Heavenly Father. Let me be a voice to your people. Bless me. Use your word. I pray, let me decrease so that you can increase in me. Let your word make impact in the lives of these people. Let your people testify after this meeting. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, once again, this is Pastor Victor Kakongim. I welcome all of you on this program. It is called Kingdom Dynamics. This is a program we air stream every Tuesday on our Facebook page, Victor Kakongim Ministries. You're going to be blessed. I'm telling you, this is your day. Hallelujah. I have a word for you. And I'll be reading in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 13. Hallelujah. Let me read for you. The book of Jonah, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 13. I read, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of I'm um, here saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come upon before me. Verse 3. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish Tis from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. And found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. And went down into it. To go with them to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea. So that the ship was about to broken up. Verse 5, then the miners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the Lord. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship, and he was fast asleep. Verse 6, so the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Verse 7. And they said to one another, and they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast the lots and the rod fell on Jonah. Verse 8. Then 
they say to him, Tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10. Then men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Verse 11. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temperous. Verse 12. And he said to them, Pick me. Pick me up. Throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Hallelujah. May God bless his, his word. Hallelujah. Now, in the few minutes, I'm going to be preaching and teaching about the title of this sermon, Who is in your boat? Who is in your boat? Who is in your boat? That is the title of this message. I don't know where you're watching me from. I don't know where you are right now. But it doesn't matter what distance. It doesn't matter what country. It doesn't matter what circumstance you're in right now. Today, it is your day. Today, it is your day. God is mindful of you. That's why God has allowed me to speak to you right now. There is a reason why you are watching me right now. I don't know why you're watching me. Maybe you're watching me on Facebook or you're watching me on our YouTube channel, Victor Kakonge Ministries. But this is the right time. This is the right time for you. So we've just read the word of God in the book of Jonah. Jonah, he was a man of God. God sent him on a mission. We've just read that the word of God came to Jonah and told Jonah to go to a great city called Nevi. Nevi. That was the city which God wanted this man of God to go. God had a reason why he wanted Jonah to go to that city. That city, it was composed. It was full of people sinning against God. That great city, Nineveh, it is the capital city of Assyria. Nineveh, this city, it was a city full of people who lie. It was full of liars. That city, it was full of people who was committing murder. They were killing young children. They were killing people. So people who lived in that city, they were full of blood because of murdering innocent people. That city... It was a city where people were worshipping small gods, were worshipping, they were worshipping idols. They were idol worshippers in that city. In that city, people were committing adultery. People were committing adultery in that very city. So it was a city which was full of different people. 
practicing different sins. That same city, Nineveh, it was a city full of people practicing witchcraft. Now, the Bible tells me that because of the wickedness which was in that city, it reached God. It was too much for God to bear. So God selected, God appointed, God ordained Jonah to go to that city, to preach to that, to that city, to tell them to repent. The message of Jonah to those people in the city of Nineveh, it was a message of repentance calling people to turn away from their wicked ways, to turn back to their God, so that God may forgive them of every sin that they committed in that great city. The city was great, but it was full of wrong people, people who were sinning in different ways. So God had a savior for that city, and that savior was Jonah. So God instructed Jonah to go to that city. But now the word of God is telling us that Jonah refused to go to that great city. Jonah rejected the word of God. Jonah rejected the instructions of God. Jonah rejected his assignment. He chose not to go to Nineveh. Now the Bible is telling us that instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah went to Joppa. When he went to Joppa, the Bible is telling me that he found a ship. That ship, it was full of business people. It was a ship full of business people going on a business trip. They were going to Tarshish. Tarshish, it is an area which is in Spain. So they were going to Spain. They were going on a business trip. These were businessmen who were on the ship. Jonah, instead of going to the city to preach the message of God, of repentance to the people who were living in the city of Nineveh, he decided to go with business people to go on a trip to go to Spain. Where God did not send, where God did not send him to go. God did not tell him to go to Tarshish, but he rejected the order of God. And this is what I found out. When you reject God, when you reject the word of God, there is consequences. There is price to pay. When you choose not to listen to the word of God, when you choose not to stay in the presence of God, because now the Bible is telling us that Jonah ran away from the presence of God. When you reject the word of God, you are out of the presence of God. When you refuse to listen to the word of God, when you refuse to do what God has instructed you to do, you are operating outside the presence of God because the word of God, it is what brings the presence of God. The instruction from God it's what brings the presence of God. But when you choose not to embrace instruction of God, to embrace the word of God, you became rebellious before God. And this is the word of God. The Bible tells me in 1 Samuel chapter 15, when you read from verse 22 to 23, the Bible tells me that obedience is better than sacrifice. So the word of God is telling me that God is more pleased with people who obey him, with people 
who listen to him, with people who follow his instructions, not people who are offering sacrifice to God. That one, it, it doesn't move God so much like to obey. When you obey, you are in the presence of God. When you obey, heavens open for you. When you obey, you are in the will of God. When you obey God, it means you're not fighting God. But when you disobey God, it means that you're fighting the will of God. And no man on this face of the earth who can fight the will of God? You can't fight God. When you choose not to walk in the ways of God, you are fighting God himself. And I've never seen a man who fight God and they win. Always when you fight God, you become a loser. You become a failure. Saul, the first king of Israel, he was rejected because he chose not to, to obey the word of God. God rejected him. The Bible is telling me that God rejected King Saul from being the king of God's people. He rejected him. He stripped him from being a king. To become just ordinary man. Why? Because he rejected the word of God. He rejected the instruction of God. When you reject God. My brothers and sisters. God will reject you. Never do that mistake. You reject God. God will reject you. And when you become rebellious. The Bible tells me in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, that when you become rebellious, rebellious, it is a sin. It is the same like committing witchcraft. So rebellious, it is a same sin like practicing witchcraft. Imagine to refuse to obey God. And you, 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 you be the same. You be on the same page. Like a witch doctor. Can you believe. That refusing to follow the instruction of God. Can make you. To be on the same level. Like a witch. Oh my brothers and sisters. Never in life. Reject the word of God. Never in life. Reject instruction from the Lord. What God tells you to do, do it. What God tells you in his word, the Bible, it is the word of God. What is written in the Bible? It is instruction from the Lord. It is all about you. It is your manual. It is something that you have to check. To reflect on your life. The word of God. It is the only tool. That gives you direction. That helps you. To connect you. To your destiny. The word of God. It is the only tool. That will edify your life. That will edify your children. That will edify your husband. That will edify your wife. That will edify whatever you do. It is the word of God only that can give you the inheritance that has been put in Christ Jesus. There is inheritance to every believer of God. Every believer of God. Every child of God. You are entitled to the inheritance of God. But you not know your inheritance. Until you read the word of God. You will not know your rights. In Christ Jesus. Unless you've read the word of God. It is the word of God. That makes you to understand. Your rights in the kingdom of God. It is the word of God. In the Bible. 
that will make you to understand how to operate in this life we are in. So, Jonah refused to follow the instruction of God. He refused to go on a trip which God instructed him to go. He decided to go to do his own thing. Look what happened to him. When you reject God, see what happens to your life. Now the Bible is telling me from verse 4 that he went, he paid his money to go to a different direction, to go to a different country. A man who was supposed to go to Nineveh, he went to Tarshish with business people. And the Bible, it, the Bible declares it very well. When he joined the ship, when he joined these miners, the business people, miners were business people in the ship. When he joined this ship, the Bible tells me that God started fighting him. How? The word of God is telling me that God sent a strong, violent wind to come to attack him because he refused to follow God's instruction, because he refused to do the will of God, because he refused to answer the calling of God on his life. So God fought him by sending a strong wind. Do you know, my brothers and sisters, when we become rebellious to God, God will fight you. God will fight you. And when God is fighting you, no one can stand with you. No one can help you. No one can deliver you because it is God himself. He's fighting you. When God is fighting a man, you cannot win God. No man can win God. No devil can win God. No unclean spirit can win God. No kingdom of darkness can win God. When is God himself fighting the kingdom of darkness, fighting a man? You cannot win. It means already you are defeated. So, because God was the one who was fighting Job. Sorry, he was God himself who was fighting Jonah. So no one could help Jonah. No one could help Jonah in the boat. Let me tell you a key thing. When it is the devil fighting you, you have God who will stand with you. You have God who will fight the battle for you. But when is God himself fighting you? Who can stand with you? Who can help you out? Do you see there is a difference? When is God fighting you? And when is the devil is fighting you? When the devil is fighting you, I've told you, you have God to stand with you. You have church to stand with you. You have a friend to stand with you. You have prayer warriors to stand with you. When it is the devil fighting you, when it is the kingdom of darkness that is fighting you, when it is witchcraft is fighting you, you have God who can defend you. But when it is not, oh my God, when it is not the devil who is fighting you, when it is God himself fighting you, you have no help. You have no redeemer. So this is what happened to Jonah. Jonah had no helper. The strong wind came and blew the ship. It was a violent wind. It was a violent storm. The Bible tells me that a ship reached to a point of breaking up. Why? Because a wrong person was on the boat. Jonah was on the boat. 
Jonah's disobedience to God, it affected other people who were in the same boat with Jonah. People started suffering. People started going through calamities. Things that they did not do. Why? Because a sinner, because a wrong person was on the same boat with them. Do you know my brothers and sisters? You are going through a lot right now. You are suffering right now. You are going through a lot of calamities because of wrong people in your life. Do you know in this generation that we are in, we have wrong people in our lives. We have wrong people in our businesses. We have wrong people in our houses. We have wrong people in our relationship. We have wrong people in our marriages. We have wrong people that we are telling our ideas. We have wrong people ruling us. We have wrong people at our workplace. We have wrong people we are working with. And when you have these wrong people in your life, your life, it will be a struggle. You toil in life because of disobedience of one person, because of a wrong person that is connected to you. It will make your life to sink. The Bible tells me that the sink of business people it started sinking because of a wrong person by his name, Jonah, who was on the ship with them. So they suffered loss because of Jonah. Because the Bible tells me that they had to lose their cargo. The ship was full of their cargo. The cargo that they had on the ship, they had to throw it out of the ship onto the sea, thinking that when they offload the ship, this wind, this storm that was trying to break their ship, maybe it will stop. Maybe it will stand, it will stand still for them to be able to continue on their journey. They lost all their cargo. But this wind couldn't stop. The Bible tells me that it continued to grow more violent. It became more tempestuous. It became more violent. It became more dangerous for the people who were on the ship. They reached a point of losing their life. Why? Because of a wrong person on the boat. Your boat can be your marriage. Your boat can be your house. Your boat can be your relationship. Your boat can be your workplace. Your boat can be... Can be your house. Your boat can be business ideas. Your boat can be your children. Your boat can be your finances. That's why I'm speaking to you right now. That there is a wrong person in your boat. There is a Jonah seated in your boat. That Jonah can be a wrong husband. That Jonah can be a wrong boyfriend. That Jonah can be a wrong friend. That Jonah can be a wrong pastor. That Jonah can be a wrong church member. That Jonah can be a wrong boss. That Jonah can be a wrong family member connected to you. When a wrong person, a person with wrong motives, a person with evil intentions, a person who is evil speaker, when that person is connected to you, when that person is still in your life, your life will not succeed. Your life will be delayed. Your life will struggle when such wrong people, they still exist in your life. That's why God has sent me to tell you that every 
person who's not supposed to be connected to your destiny, any person in your marriage, any person who's causing calamity, you see when you have wrong people in your life, there is calamity. There is calamity upon calamity. There are problems that will arise on a daily basis. Why? Because of a wrong person, because of people with evil intentions connected to you, seated with you, speaking to you, pretending that they give you advice, pretending that they are on the same trip. Remember, Jonah was on the boat pretending to be a business person, going on the same journey with innocent businessmen, not knowing that at that very time, he was a wrong person to be in that boat. Because if that Jonah wasn't on that boat, these people wouldn't have suffered loss. These people wouldn't have been in that state of confusion. All those things happened because of Jonah being on the boat. So this is my cry. This is what is on my heart. Who is that wrong person that you married to you? Who is that business partner that joined with you? Who is that person who is trying to engage you? Who is that person who is in relationship with you? Who is that person whom you call a friend who is working with you right now? Who is that person who is causing trouble to you without your knowing? Who is that person behind your suffering? Who is that person who is witching you? Who is that person who doesn't want you to succeed in life? Who is that person who doesn't want you to reign in life? Who is that person who doesn't want you to have children? Who is that person who doesn't want you to have your own building? Who is that person who doesn't want you to have a job? Who is that person who doesn't want who doesn't want to see you getting promoted? Who is that person who doesn't want to see you getting married? Who is that person who doesn't want you to get wealthy and rich. Who is that person who is behind all your suffering? Who is that person in your boat? There is a person in your boat who is witching you, who is bewitching you. There is that person in your boat who wants your children dead. There is that person in your boat who doesn't want to succeed in their life. There is that person there is that person, 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 my brothers and sisters. Who is that person? Who is that person? My brothers and sisters, God has sent me to pray for you that any Jonah, any person who is not supposed to be in your boat, any evil person appointed by the devil or any person who have been connected to you all these years, all the past years, or any person who have come into your life and that person is not supposed to be in your life. Any person who is in your life but is outside the will of God, it is not God's will that person to be in your life. Right now, as a man of God, I'm praying for you that every Jonah in your boat, every evil person in your boat, any person who's not supposed to be in your life, any person who's causing problems to your marriage, to your business, any person who wants you dead right now, any kind of such a person in your boat, time has come. We are throwing those people out of our boats. Throw that person out of your boat. The Bible tells me in the book of Jonah chapter 1 verse 12 that Jonah said that everything that you've gone through, it was because of me. He told them, if you want, if you want your life to be safe, if you want these problems to be, to be solved, throw me out of the ship. Then, all this mess, all this confusion, the trouble, the calamities, it will stop. 
And when they did that, everything stopped. When Jonah was thrown out of the boat into the sea, the people were saved from dying. People, they received peace. Confusion stopped. The sea became still. They traveled safely to where they were going. This is my prayer. I want to see you succeeding in life. I want to see you fulfilling your destiny. I want to see you miracles happening in your life. But they will not happen when this person is still in your boat. This person in form of Jonah in your boat right now. Right now, I'm kicking that person out of your boat. Physically and spiritually, let us pray together. Let us believe God together. Join your faith with me and we pray together. Such people, they are going to be eliminated right now. Such people, they are going to be out of your boat. And you're going to see mind-blowing miracles in your life. After this prayer point, my God, my Father, I'm praying for every person who's listening to me right now. Any person under the sound of my voice, I pray for them. Any Jonah in their life, any Jonah in their board, any Jonah at their workplace, any Jonah in their education, any Jonah connected to them, today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command Jonas, I command evil people, I command wrong people to be out of their lives, to be out of their destiny, to be out of their boat, to be out of their marriage, to be out, 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 out. Heavenly Father, we are picking them right now. Spiritually and physically, we are picking them out of our lives, out of our boat. Right now, we are throwing them to the sea in the name of Jesus. Be thrown out. Be thrown out. We are kicking them. We are kicking them out of our relationship, out of our marriages, out of our business, business ideas. Out. 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 Out of our houses. Out. We are kicking them out. In the name of Jesus. Be out. Be out. Be out. Be out. In the lives of these people. Be out. Be out. Be out. Be out. Out. We detach ourselves. We detach ourselves. We detach ourselves from evil people. From wrong people. From the Jonas who have been with us for all this long without knowing it. We detach ourselves. I detach you. I detach you. I detach you. I detach you. You, a person who's watching me right now, I detach you from evil men, from evil women. I detach you. I detach you. I detach you from that wrong person. I detach you from that person who have been in your life illegally. Today, I command that person to let you go, to live your life in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Let them depart from your marriage. Let them depart from your business. Let them depart from your education. Let them depart from your ministry. Let them depart from your church. Let them depart where you work from. Let them depart from your tribe, from your marriage. Depart, 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 depart in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They will never be connected to your life again. They will never be in your boat from today in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare. I prophesy under the anointing of Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If a person, wrong person, who is not in the will of God to be connected to you, from today, they will never exist again in your life. From today, they are leaving you. They are going in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They are going... They are going, they are going, go, 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 go out of their lives. Go out of every person who's watching me right now. 
live their lives. Father, set them free in the name of Jesus. Set these people free in the name of Jesus. My God, today I establish them. I establish them in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That wrong people, they will not allocate them from today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover all of you in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover whatever you do. I cover your children. I cover your entire family. I cover your ministry. I cover your church in the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be covered in the blood. Be covered in the blood of Jesus. Be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that will protect you from wrong people having access to your marriage, having access to your relationship, having access to your business, having access to your business partners, having access to everything that you do right now. Father, Bless them. I bless them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So shall it be. Because it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' name. Have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for watching me. Thank you to connect. To our program. Kingdom Dynamics. I love you all of you. Share this video, like this video, invite someone to see this video. I'm telling you, your life will not stay the same. Your life will not stay the same. God is blessing you in such a time like this. This is your day. Remember, this is Pastor Victor, the founder of Victor Kakonge Ministry by the grace of God. God have used me. In many different countries, everywhere I go, everywhere I've been, I've been seeing the mighty hand of God moving, blessing God's people. So you are the next in the line. You are the next in the line. My brothers and sisters, before I go, I'm telling you, God has anointed me to write this wonderful book. It is called Fear No Evil. It is a new book that has been published. It is, it is on Amazon stores. You can have it in any country where you are. It is in two formats. You can have it on ebook. That, me that means that you can download it on your phone dialect. You can download it on your iPad, on your computer, on any digital equipment you have. You can download it everywhere you are in the world. And you can have it in paperback. This is a paperback in hard copy. You can have it as well. So it is your choice. You can choose what you want to have. You can order it on our website, Victor Kakonga Ministries, or go on Amazon. It is there, as I've told you. Or write to us on our Facebook Victor Kakonge Ministries. Tell us what do you think. Tell us this book. It is a tool to move you from where the devil kept you all this wrong. To take you to a place of your destiny. This book, Fear No Evil, it is a tool that will teach you how to deal with the spirit of fear, how to deal with depression, how to deal with poverty. This is a tool to help you to overcome any kind of fear. Any kind of weapon that the devil uses to attack all these people. Everything is written inside this book. It has got prayer points. It has got my prayers when I'm praying for you. It has got the word of God. It has got testimonies of different people in different countries. I know you will be blessed by reading this book. God bless you. I love you all. This is Pastor Victor Kakonge. Stay blessed. I wish you a very blessed week in the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Amen.